Hey what's up guys, MGH here and welcome back to another Watford career mode episode. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I haven't done one of these in a long time. I thought I would record the gameplay separately and do a post commentary. It has been a long time since I did one and it, it makes it easier sometimes to cram a lot of footage into one episode. So obviously we've just finished off the transfer window. That was the team that we've managed to put together so far. And this is the league table after three games yet to score and yet to win a game. So I thought, right, let's play, you know, five, six games in one episode and really focus while I was playing. I wanted to make sure that not only was I getting used to the team and being able to, to think without having to do live commentary, but it also meant that I was able to get more into one episode just to get things going a little bit quicker and uh, getting through some of these uh, these games that are coming up very quickly. Our first one isn't an easy one. Away from home to West Ham, we've got two player debuts today. We've got Corona, our biggest signing, £26.5 million, and Coziello, the young Frenchman in midfield. And let me just say this now, guys. He scores, I think, one of my best goals on FIFA 17 in this episode. I cannot wait to show you that goal. And not only does he score a beautiful goal, he is just a delight to play with. He's got such good feet, great passing, and he, actually he takes part in this goal. What a way to open your season scoring with your left back, Robertson. I mean, he was uh, a signing that I wasn't sure if it was worthwhile because his, his potential, I think, is only around 82, 83, and I could have gone for someone bigger and better. But actually, I'm really liking him so far. And here's Corona. I wanted to show you how he's looking like a very good signing as well. He's got some great skills. Five-star weak foot. We almost get very lucky there with a defensive mistake from West Ham. But unfortunately, we couldn't capitalise. And here he is again going through down this right side. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of this where he's just terrorising defenders. But unfortunately, we ran it out of play there. And that was half-time. So not a bad start to our fourth game of the season. We finally get our first goal of the season. And uh, in the second half, I just wanted to finish this game off and just get my first win under my belt. And uh, away from home at West Ham, that is not a bad time to do it. And look at the space I've got here for my right back, JJ. Really, really like him as well. He reminds me of Aurier. And uh, he's very similar, very quick, very strong. But how Pereira have it, hasn't scored there, I don't know. I actually subbed him off right away after that and brought on Kennedy and Ndidi. Two players that definitely will feature heavily, probably as squad players but Kennedy got straight away involved in the game and actually has a shot parried onto the post there by Adrian very very close to getting our second goal but unfortunately it only ended 1-0 not the most exciting game ever but guys we got the job done and I thought right let's change it up let's go with a 3-4-3 formation this is pretty much what Chelsea are using and uh, straight away I thought this is going to be interesting against Manchester United at home. Three at the back against some very good midfielders. I knew Mkhitaryan was playing because, as you can see there, he was in the kit selection thing. Although that doesn't necessarily mean he's playing, of course. But you can see he does make it into the team. Ashley Young on the other side. Mata and Rashford. Look at the bench. I mean, I think Man United were a little bit rude, a little bit disrespectful. I mean, come on. We, we, I know we're almost, you know, bottom five or so. And we haven't been brilliant, but come on, this is still a not, it's not an easy fixture for any team to go to Watford and get points. And uh, we get off to the best possible start ever with Deeney scoring a bit of a fluky goal. I think it came off Bailey's knee and uh, went past De Gea. I don't think this would have gone in if it didn't take the deflection. So a very lucky start. But not only that, guys, we were absolutely all over Manchester United in the first 30 minutes or so. You can see I had plenty of chances specifically from set plays and corners where De Gea had to be called upon. And then this happens, the ultimate ultra attack. I mean, this is a counter-attack of dreams from Manchester United and Rashford just completely does me there and uh, scores a very nice solo effort and an assist from Mata. And Rashford is, that, is actually someone I've got my eye on, guys. I'm thinking maybe Rashford could be a potential signing at some point in his career mode. I'm yet to use him in FIFA 17 and I bet he's absolutely incredible um, but would he suit this lineup? Oh, I don't know. I think he, he kind of needs someone else up there with him. But anyway, into the second half here. Man United definitely started to play the better football. They were dominating the game. But we tried as many as many times as we could to get forward using the 3-4-3. The, uh, the three, three. And unfortunately, one of the main components of this formation, Corona on that right side, picks up a freaking injury. Of course he does. I get injuries constantly. And to make things worse... We get a yellow, uh, not a yellow card, we get a red card. And it's just 
it's so, so frustrating because I thought I was there. I thought I was going to win the tackle, but unfortunately not. Um, but luckily, we do manage to survive to the end of the game there to pick ourselves up one point against a strong Man United team. But it's bad news, guys. Corona, our best signing and most expensive signing, is going to be out for 12 weeks. Three months on the sideline, and it means Emre Moore is going to have to step up. So, uh, talking of Emre Moore, I decided to play him up front in this game with Isaac's success, with Kennedy on the left. And I tell you what, I think I have found the deadly trio now, don't get me wrong, Corona will play, obviously, when he's back from his injury. But this actually might be a bit of a gift because now Emre Moore is going to get a lot of game time. And this guy is insane. Look at his pace there to get through the defence. Beautiful cross in for success. And look at that, 35 minutes into this EFL Cup fixture against Leicester, we are 2-0 up. And it's looking like we're going to go, uh, go ahead and progress through quite easily in this game. And there's half-time. Leicester really couldn't do anything but then in the second half early on I give away the ball to Amate here tries to get away the shot I tried to clear it and uh, another shot comes in from Mendy it's a bit of a mess we managed to get it away and then this happens Vardy goes through on goal and he's very very deadly on FIFA and it just goes wide I thought that was it they could have easily been 2-0 at this point um, but we do manage to hold on 2-0 in the end there and we progress in the EFL Cup which I would love to win the FA Cup as well would be a, a great a great chance of getting some silverware. I don't think the Premier League and the Champions League are coming anytime soon or the Europa League. So we need to make these domestic cups a priority, I think. Now, into the next Premier League game. Up against Burnley, we get very close to opening the scoring. 11 minutes in there. Isaac success. What a striker this guy is. Already ahead of Dini, if you ask me. I have to play Isaac success. And uh, actually, in this game, I was trying out success um as not a target man I thought I would try him as a player that was getting in behind and it didn't seem to work it seems better when he's holding up the ball turning and then running away from defenders but as you can see nil nil late into the second half here Burnley almost score a header with Boyd it was just one of those games where I had loads of chances but just could not put them in and uh, I brought on Emery Moore sorry brought off Emery Moore here and brought on Kennedy he was straight away involved once again and uh, we almost score in the last few seconds of the game. Pereira turns his defender, hits it, and it gets blocked. But it wasn't over there, guys. There's always a good chance that I will slide in and get myself another red card. But look at this. What the hell? That is a brilliant challenge from my signing Lindelof. The big German, not the big German, the big Swedish giant. He is such a good defender, but I, I don't understand where the ref is coming from. I thought that was a very, very good tackle. You can go back and see it. And we almost pay for it, guys. Look how close that was from Defauer there. Probably should have gone in. It was so, so close. But we end up drawing that game nil-nil. And now into the next game. And we've got Bournemouth at home. So after dropping points against Burnley, get, dropping points against Manchester United, I needed to get a win today. And as you can see, we're actually the best defensive team in the Premier League. It doesn't make sense, but it does show you the same thing. I just don't seem to score enough goals defensively. I'm looking good again, just like my Arsenal career mode. Now, if you look at the uh, formation I'm using there, it's uh, a 3-5-2. I've actually gone with two strikers. For the first time, I'm going with two strikers at the same level. Instead of three up front, it's two. And straight away, a little 1-2 with Kennedy, who is playing alongside success. They, uh, they really do a nice 1-2 there. And it's another red card, but this time, it's not for me. Wilshere's complaining on loan from Arsenal, of course, but that's not going to help anything. We get the free kick. Could have easily been a penalty. And look at that. Just about misses the top right corner. And Pereira is looking like a very good set-piece taker for us. So I'm really, really happy that Watford signed him. That is a, a very nice signing indeed. Really excited to use him in this career mode. Now, Montero down this right side. He is playing on the left. Tried to get down that right side. Unfortunately, couldn't break through the 10-man Bournemouth. But you know what's going to happen in the second half, guys. And just watch this. From Coziello on the edge of the box lobs the keeper I mean what can you do about that <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you guys I'm gonna be absolutely 100% honest I did not mean to do that but I am gonna take credit for it nonetheless I don't know what I was thinking I kind of panicked I think I tried to do a finesse shot or a driven shot and I held down L1 I still to this date don't know why I did that but I'm glad I did what a finish from the youngster that is absolutely sublime it's perfectly weighted and Buruch there, no chance, mate. See you later. What a way to open the scoring. And don't forget, they are down to 10 men. So it meant that 
possibly the floodgates would open here. So Kabul manages to win a loose ball. Pereira passes it down here to success. And Kennedy's making his run. You're not going to keep up with Kennedy in this situation. And then I get the driven shot right. Look at that. Lovely, powerful shot into the bottom left corner. 2-0 against 10 men. You could probably say it was game over at this point, even with 17 minutes to play. We also get a corner late on, just before the end of the game here. Montero hits it on the edge of the box, and it comes off the bar. That would have been such a lovely way to end this game with a 3-0 victory, but instead it's 2-0, and now let's have a look at their table. So we've moved up into ninth place after seven games. Two wins, three draws, two losses, and now we've got a positive goal difference. We've scored four and conceded three. So still, we've conceded the least goals along with Manchester City, and uh, our problem is scoring goals. We are the least scoring goal. We've scored the least goals in the league along with Liverpool and uh, Burnley, I think it is there. So that's a bit of a shame. But I know I, I know what I need to work on. And also, guys, I think I have found the perfect formation. And that is with two strikers up front. So in the next episode, we're going back to live commentary. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. It's a little bit different. And I will see you in the next episode very soon.